Welcome in. It's not quite Sunday Scaries, but it's Sunday something because it's Super Bowl Sunday. Get a double. It is double. here. <laughs> it is here. The most glorious would be holiday in American history. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Very true. Yes, it is. Should be Monday. Should be day off. I don't know what they're doing. Got to figure this out. <laughs> My main man and analyst, Bucks McGee. Not make two Palmetto. Where do we start? This is, first of all, like this game is like all chalk, and we've had a couple of these in recent years, mm-hmm. which we never used to. We're getting spoiled now, but in the past, we're not. We never used to get all chalk Super Bowl matchups. True, true, true. It's, I don't know. It's, it kind of feels like it doesn't have a little something to it, you know, like. Most Super Bowls, like that hype, once those championship games are over, you just feel it right away. This, I guess, a slow burn. You know, I think most of the country is kind of like, okay, you know, but there isn't like that, that feel, you know, I'm kind of missing that, that little extra, you know, oomph to it, but it's the Super Bowl, you know, I'm I'm, going to love it either way. (laughs) The other thing that it could be actually is lack of hype hangover from last year because last year's last year's game was extremely lacking in hype <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> and but i don't you know, know... What? the game made up for it though i think the game made up for it mm-hmm. you know but you would think with you know a number the number ones from each conference that there would just be this and I think, you know, people are digging for things and like, it's really cool. You know, like one of the big, you know, big storylines, it's, you know, the first Super Bowl with, you know, two black starting quarterbacks, which is cool. Awesome. But when you sit there and you look at everything else, you're kind of like, okay. Yeah. So, and they were, I'm picking, hmm? they were picking apart, um, like the matchups, like who's better, but they were going like position by position by position. They said it was like only seven out of, no, it wasn't seven, seven out of 15, only seven out of 15, which doesn't sound right to me because that, mm-hmm. that's just about half. But um, they sent on NFL Network that it was like a very small amount of the total players on both sides that the Kansas City had a decided advantage over Philadelphia. I can see it. If you're talking, you know, player versus player, then yeah. yeah. I think that's where, and you know, we'll get into it, you know, when we make our picks and all, but I think that's where the Eagles kind of stand out. I think they're a better sum of parts than than the Chiefs are. You know, the Chiefs, like I said, the Chiefs Chiefs played great. They deserve to be there. You know, they've thrown in some new parts and such, you know, to make up for like Tyreek and such. But, you know, the Eagles just went together. They just, they play well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's easy to nitpick because at this point it's two weeks. So you're looking for anything and everything to talk about. So, of course, it's going to be like, well, who eats their oatmeal the best? Who tied, whose shoes are tied the best? You know, that's the edge. Like, you start grabbing at straws at this point because we just want the game. It's the worst two weeks in sports. <laughs> exactly. You're like, why do we got to wait two weeks? Like, I get it, but it's like, sometimes I'm like, let's just go into it. You know, a week, I think a week's enough. Let it happen. And I'm sorry, NFL, we are not appeased by a flag football game. <laughs> no, my- the worst Pro Bowl ever. I haven't watched the Pro Bowl. Honestly, I can't even remember the last Pro Bowl I watched. And this just adds to it. Like, there's no reason for it. Send these guys to Hawaii like they used to. Make it make it something. Because now you get voted for the Pro Bowl, and it's like, yeah, whoop de doo Oh, I was the flag football MVP. And, and move it to the week after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Be- exactly. move, it back, move it back to after, because it's already highly questionable if the Super Bowl participants are going to play in the Pro Bowl well, as it is, like if they just played the Super Bowl, yeah. but you almost immediately eliminate them all if you play the league before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, mind you, they're probably depending on, you know, 
the players they're probably still not going to play but at least you got a better shot at it you know you're picking guys off of teams and such just to fill roster spots they're guys who are becoming pro bowlers and I'm not to be disrespectful but like like do they really need to be pro bowlers <laughs> Like I just want to get a roster spot because I can make it. I can make a Pro Bowl, <laughs> you know. Put it on there because you know when you're getting voted into the Hall of Fame, you know that's one of the big things. You know you were a ten-time Pro Bowler, yeah. But how many of those Pro Bowls were you really supposed to be in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like let's be real. But uh, you're know, not here to knock it. You get voted in. You get voted in. That's right. Oh, all right. Let's start. Let's start unboxing it. Speaking of some of these players that did not play in the Pro Bowl, <laughs> let's talk about the most prominent position on the field. Of course, that's the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to ask which of these two has the most approved because that's fairly obvious. Or mm-hmm. not, not most approved, I should say, but like who has the most on the line? Right. I think that's fairly obvious. So I won't do that. So fairly. I'll stay. I'll, I'll take a different route on it. What does each one of them have to prove? Like, wow. we, like what's at stake for Pat and what's at stake for Jalen Hurts? Let's see. Um, let's see. Jalen Hurts, I think it, it proves that he belongs. You know, at the beginning of the season, no one knew what Jalen Hurts was. A lot of people in Philly didn't even want him as a starting quarterback, let's be honest. Like, when he was drafted, everyone was like, oh, okay. No one really wanted him. So it was kind. Of, this has kind of been the prove-it year for him, you know? And he's played great, been impressive, you know? Minus, you know, the couple games he missed with injury and all, he's been great, you know? So I think for him, it's kind of like the vindication that, yes, I should have been, you know, the starter. There should have been no question. I belong here in the league. For Mahomes, it's strictly it. Let's be honest. It's the chase for greatness. It's the chase for for the goat. You know, because a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> you're always gonna get one. <laughs> you know, it's it's that chase because everyone's like, well, some people have said, well, if he wins the second one, he's on his way to goat status. This is it. You know, and. I think he still has more to prove in that sense. It's because let's say, God forbid, his season ends tomorrow, his career ends tomorrow. You're not, you know, he's as talented as can be, you know, the moniker, the magician, you know, the guy's incredible. But let me see what he's done in 10 years. Give him 10 years. Because this run has been great. Let's be honest. It's been great in Kansas City. But how long is that sustainable? You know? So. I think it's a legacy situation with Mahomes. With Hurts, it's I belong. And it's funny with Mahomes, like, it's probably the, the the media being what they are, is they're probably going to make it out to be like the world is falling if mm-hmm. Mahomes loses this because that takes him to one, one, two. One, two, yep, one win, two losses. Right, so that that takes him to that like weird little, oh my god, he gets the big game, but he can't win anymore. Uh, uh, space or air, and mm-hmm. it's like people forget he's what twenty six, twenty seven, and he goes to the championship game every year. I don't think he's, I don't think, I, I don't think he's going to be lacking in opportunities after this game if they lose. <laughs> I know, I know the AFC has got some is, is getting better, and there's a lot yeah. of really teams in the like, AFC, but still, I don't think kids is going away anytime soon. <laughs> they're not going away, but the road to it is a lot harder. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at it back in the day, and we always go back to the you know the Brady Payton days, it was whoever won out of that was going. Like that was it. Like you kind of had the Ravens were around, you had Pittsburgh, but. If you were picking two teams right off the bat, who you you were going to put money on? Yeah, those were the two: New That's England, you started, and, Indy. and then you worked your way down. Yeah. Exactly. Now, for the last you know four or five years, it's been KC. You know, KC's been in there, but now, like you said, there are other teams that are coming up, and KC has had to kind of change what they are. You know, as all teams do, but now you have to sit there and say. Is it sustainable? Let's be honest. 
their offensive coordinator is probably going to be gone in a couple years. Does Travis Kelsey last another five, six years at this level? Now, does Mahomes start to slow down? Can he still do, so he, does he start to do the things that he can? He can do them now because he's young and he's incredible. Starts to get older because he just become a pure pocket passer. Like there are things that that will affect this. So, yeah, right now, Kansas City, they're it. You look at next year, I don't know. So for him this year, it's it's for Mahomes, it's legacy. For Hertz, it's I belong, I'm legitimate. Now do you believe in me? <laughs> Speaking of the beginning of the year when even the Philly fans were like, didn't know if they wanted him or not. At the beginning of the year, there were still people asking whether or not Justin Fields was a better option. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, exactly. It was like, oh man, Justin, why didn't we take Justin Hurt, Justin freaking Fields? Like, <laughs> But to Hertz's credit, you know what? He was like, all right, well, if that's what you guys think, that's what you think. I'm going to do what I do. Yeah. We're going to see what happens. And, like, don't forget, he was the starter at Alabama. They benched him for Tua. And he, stand up guy, was all about Tua, you know, right there with him. Then he left and went to Oklahoma. He's like, I, I know I'm a starter. I know I'm quality. And he went and bet on himself. And now you're starting to see the fruits of that. Yeah. Um. the The other thing I think, like, it it is it, that you're definitely right with like this is to prove he belongs, and it's kind of like I really want to. We'll get into it. We'll unbox the the awards, of course, a little later on. But I really want him to win the MVP because I think they are the favorites. I think they are the favorites in this game. And for if he were to win both MVPs. That's like super solidification right there. Oh, n- exactly. <laughs> if he had won it, it would have been like, I've arrived. Yeah. Even if he had lost the Super Bowl, it would have been like, all right, people know I'm legitimate. I'm the real deal. But you know how the MVP went, goes. And I think last year kind of vindicates this year's as well. You know, Rodgers wins it last year. All right, whatever. I believe someone else was just as good, if not better. Someone it's else. Bias. It's bias. I'm going to be honest. But, you know, I think if people look back at it, people would say, wait a minute. But you know what? The league likes who they like. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers was always the golden boy. You know, Brady was too. But Aaron Rodgers has always been this, oh, wow, physically he's gifted, yada, yada, yada. Mahomes has now stepped into that role. But if Mahomes loses tomorrow, their careers are almost on the same trajectory, if you think about it. Right. You know, Rodgers won early enough in his career, and everyone thought, oh, he'll be back. He'll be back. Never was again. Right. And in different ways, too, because here they both have, they heard they both have won. They got their first one. Rodgers never went back. Mahomes has been has been back now, but he, yeah. he can't. He wouldn't. He, at, this, at that point, he wouldn't be able to lock lock another one up. Right. You know. Okay. And if you look at at the gate, and people have brought this up, if you look at his stats in the Super Bowl, Mahomes it really hasn't lit it up. Yeah. You know he's he's had some he's had some rough bowls. Bowls. Let's be be honest. So I think what's going to happen is. They're going to make it not about him per se. He's going to he's gonna have to make plays, of course. But their offense isn't going to be like, all right, we got to have him throw 40 times and be great so we can prove that Mahomes is the man, you know? But, yeah, <laughs> I think there is some pressure on him because it's, it's a legacy thing, you know? In such a situation, I would want to remind Andy Reid <laughs> of Pete Carroll's mistake to make Russ throw a little bit too much in the Super Bowl. <laughs> what are you talking about? One of the great play calls of all time. Why would you want to uh, hand it to your bell cow back who slashed the defense <laughs> up and, and down all night? <laughs> all night. But you know what? Let's get all zen and throw the ball. The half yard line. <laughs> the half yard line. <laughs> Greatest half yard line toss ever. Made Malcolm Butler's career. That's, That's, right. <laughs> That's exactly. That's right. Malcolm Butler's career got a truck out of it. And then after that, became great for about two, three years. (laughs) 
You know, let's be honest here. Yeah. Let's be honest. I will say though, I, I won't blame Pat so much for the last one because he had no protection. Like, oh no, there's no <laughs> doubt. Um, he never brought the house, was... and they couldn't protect him for garbage. <laughs> no, that O line was horrible, and they were they did what Cincinnati tried to do this year, which was do whatever we can to get that O line tight and right, and they succeeded. Because yeah, Tampa brought the house and everything, and then so, you know. So, I think the Eagles, Eagles have a talented defense, top to bottom, and it's going to be interesting. You know, um, you know, Mahomes should be close to 100. percent I'm sure, you know, the ankle still got a little something to it, but it's. It, it's going to be interesting how, how it all plays out because it's – let's say he has a bad game. Let's say Mahomes just – you know, they somehow win it, but Mahomes has a bad game. Now, you know how, how it's going to turn into. Mahomes, you know, he's on his way to GOAT status, yada, yada. The truest will look at it and say, yeah, but he survived. You know, now they're going to look at it and say, all right, he's better than Rodgers because at that point – He's better than Rodgers, right? Better than one, yeah. Okay. And then you sit there and say, okay, well, does he have to make it next year and have a great game to truly solidify himself? Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, accumulation means something. Right, but... Then Roethlisberger had a pretty terrible Super Bowl, too, and everyone kind of forgets about it now. <laughs> right, but they always remember to throw in the end zone, you know, to Antonio Holmes. So, you know, it's kind of like... Nah, the moment. Yeah, it's a signature You moment. know, you know, but don't forget, you know, Ben Ben kind of had this hero thing, you know. He played through pain, you know. He was big, he was tough. He's, you know, he played through, you know, shoulder injuries and all of this. Oh, you're not it, sold by the ankle, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> wow no I like I said I you know here's the thing here's the thing you know and I I, I have grown I have grown in my in my respect for, for Kansas City if you ask me right now my favorite chief no doubt is Travis Kelsey now mind you if you asked me this last year I'd be like I can't stand that man if, if, you I, asked, if I asked you this seven weeks ago <laughs> And you know what it was? It's the podcast. It's the podcast. Like I sit there and I listen to those guys, listen to the brothers. And you know what? They're legitimate, you know? And Tra- and Travis, like his brother, you know, asked him, you know, his Mount Rushmore of tight ends. You know? And I watched this episode with very close attention because I'm like, all right, who are you putting up there? Mm-hmm. So he puts up there Kellen Winslow, you know, because he basically okay. is is the forefather of the tight end. The original, yeah, yeah, You know, let's be realistic. When, you know, they started throwing the ball more to the tight end, became a viable offensive threat instead of just a guy who sits there and blocks and catches three passes a year. Tony Gonzalez. Sure. You know, who basically blew it up, you know. And then he mentions Gronk, and I'm like, you know what? Finally. Thank <laughs> God. Thank you. Thank you. Because, mind you, Travis had a hell of a season this year, but all I had to hear was, I was the best, blah, 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 blah. It's better than Grok. And I'm like, y'all need to stop. Because y'all don't watch film. Y'all don't watch film. So, but no. Like, like there are times I watch it, and I'm still like, all right, yeah, Travis Kelsey, blah, blah, whatever, whatever. But I can appreciate, I can appreciate what he does. I can appreciate it. So, but no. I, you know. But if you're asking me, Patrick Mahomes, no, it's a thorn in my side. A little less than than Aaron Rodgers because they're so hard. Everyone is so hard to anoint him like the greatest of all time. Because you hear people starting to say this and it's like, hold, hold it here. Hold it here. You know, individuals who shall remain nameless get dinged for longevity. <laughs> so is it a person's fault that they can play at an incredible level for 23 years <laughs> you know, is he was only is a person only supposed to, and literally had three Hall of Fame careers within those twenty three years. <laughs> yeah. Really so, really or cool. would you rather have a guy who wins two, maybe three Super Bowls, plays ten years, but he's supposed to be the greatest? You know, I bite down, 
but the guy's talented. I have nothing against Patrick Mahomes talent wise. Incredible talent. Um, I want to see what he is in year eight, nine, ten. Because yeah. then I think you truly say where he's at. Speaking of where some where people are at after long runs of sustained success or breaking right in the cusp, let's talk to coaches. Now Andy Reid already has two Super Bowl losses. Mm-hmm. Um, one here, one not here. Mm-hmm. Ironically enough, <laughs> the other losses was with the Eagles, who he's now going against. Um, <laughs> Ding! I'll give it. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Yep. So, obviously, there's much more on the line for Andy Reid. Nick Sirianni is his first time here. He's had a wonderful start to his coaching, his head coaching career. Um, mm-hmm. But still, his first time here. I mean, Sean McVay's first time there was a bit of a stinker, and he still got a Super Bowl a couple of years after that. Right. Mind you, they did sell their souls on the farm for it, but that's besides the point. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, Covered is bare. So, what's the storyline as far as what a win means, means to each of them? Andy Reid, his, his second trophy, goes into the upper echelon with all the other great head coaches in league history, or at least in Super Bowl history. Um, or Nick Sirianni, a young guy, comes out like a firecracker, a lot of success, and continues this recent trend of young coaches having very high levels of success early in the league with a Super Bowl this early. All right. I think... Old guard, new guard kind of thing. (laughs) No, exactly. Exactly. No, it definitely is. Um, I think it's the same, almost the same thing as with the quarterbacks. I think with Andy, it's, it's legacy. He wins the Super Bowl, then yeah, you can mention him as, as one of the best of all time. You know, to have the success he had in Philly, to come to, you know, KC, and then, you know, turn that franchise around. So I think it's a legacy thing with Andy. Uh, Seriani, yeah, you said he's the new kid. No one believes in the new kids. Come on now. When the new kid comes to play, the only reason you invite him is he's got a ball or a bat and you need him. So you're like, yeah, come on, kid, play. And then when you see he can play, you're like, oh, okay. And I think there's a there's a little chip, a little edge to Seriani. I think he fits that team perfectly, that Philly feel. So I think he's he's going to have that team ready to, you know, walk in and say, I don't care who we're playing. I don't care if it's Kansas City. Who are they? I think they're going to walk in with that. I think they're going to walk in with that edge. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> exactly. Because I think even though Philly's favored, I think they're the underdog. Let's, let's be honest. I think they're favored, but people, most people would say, okay, yeah, Kansas City's going to win. Mm-hmm. So, but no, I think for Sirianni, it's that, yep, told you, told you we were good. I proved it to you. Now we're here. Do you think should Philly win this game? Mm-hmm. Do you think that the Andy Reid generation of coaches will all of a sudden stop getting jobs? Because you, at this point, you would have had Sirianni getting a Super Bowl. Sean McVay got a Super Bowl. Uh, Zach Taylor has been very, very close. <laughs> um, uh, who am I thinking of? That? Ke- Kevin O'Connell from Minnesota. Nobody expected anything out of Minnesota, and they were very good. Ryan Dable, just one coach of the year. Um mm-hmm. He's not, I don't think he's quite as young as the other ones, but he's still on the younger side and very fresh in the, you know, his first year as a head coach. Mm-hmm. What his age is. So do you think, like, with an Eagles win, will we stop seeing the gen- the Andy Reid generation of coaches getting jobs? No, I, I don't. I think there's less of them just because they've been around for so long, they retire. Um, if they show that they can do it, no, I still think, especially if it's like a franchise that is just totally shat it and they need somebody to come in and kind of create a new culture of stability, then someone like, let's say, you know, something happens in Kansas City in two years and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, and Andy's like, I'm gone. I, I'm done, you know. But a year or two later, someone reaches out to him and says, hey, you know, can you come in for a you know, three-year deal? I just, we need to, he needs to fix this. 
and we think you're the guy. There's some guys who are are about the teaching aspect, about developing. So no, I think if you got a guy who's been successful, and even though he's been, you know, he's on the other side of his career in theory, no, those guys still have a place. You know, I think if the, if they're used with with good intention, like Lovey over in um Houston, yeah. worst worst bad thing. You knew that guy was getting a raw deal right off the bat, mm-hmm. but he loved to coach, so he was he wanted to go there and change the culture. You know what? He did get them to play pretty darn hard, too. I think they like not have a lot of talent. (laughs) No, no. You you gave him a bunch of eighth graders going up against, you know, juniors in high school. Like, what was going to happen? Like, you had some some little glimpses of of quality there because they have some young players. But you knew he knew what he was in for. But he loves the sport, so he embraced it. So, no, I think the older guys still have a place. I think they still can coach, but I think that's also why they bring in these coordinators to handle that stuff. Because let's be honest, head coaches, depending on who it is, really don't have their hands in it as much. Like they pretty much have their, they bring in the hot college coordinators. All right, you guys do it. I'm going to come see what you're doing. All right, let's get results. And that that's how it is. Andy's probably the only one that does still. <laughs> Him, yep. Um, Belichick still has his hand in the defense. Yeah. Um, if you look league wide, yeah, it's it's a rarity now. Pretty much, it's the hot young coordinators, and then those guys are the ones that branch off the tree, and then go from there. Ironically enough, Nick Sirianni was a hot young coordinator, but he didn't call the plays. I mean, all, that was all Frank. That was all Frank's doing. <laughs> yes, Frank Reich. That's right. Give that man some respect, Chase. Hey, Frank. hey, when he first came, when he first came to Indy, he was, I, I, I thought his play calling was beautiful. It just fell apart in the last few years, and I don't know why. He didn't have a quarterback. It's going to be beautiful in Carolina. <laughs> Sam Darnold. <laughs> you know they're going to get rid of Sam Darnold. You know it's going to be somebody else. Brady's coming back for Carolina. It's going to bring Carolina on the map. I'll keep the guest room warm for you. <laughs> yep, that's it. I'm buying tickets. <laughs> buying tickets every weekend. Gas is gonna suck, but so be it. No, but um, came down no, to 282. I, came down to 282 this weekend. If you're not, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think there's a place for the for for and for the Andy Reeds of the world. If you want to say it, Andy's successful, so I think there's a place for him. Um, but yeah, I think now. It's we're old enough now where we're seeing the change, you know. Uh, you know, people are getting older. It's the new breed. So yeah, mm, don't say the old word. <laughs> we're getting vintage. So you know, <laughs> hardwood classics. <laughs> Popping in those VHS is watching them over. Like I remember that. That was '98. <laughs> How long ago was that? Like 25 years ago. <gasps> <gasps> So, hey, give a kid today a VHS tape. They won't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's like when you, you give them a you give them a rotary phone. They have no idea what's going on. They're putting their fingers in the hole. Yeah. What's that happening? I can't text with this. <laughs> <laughs> How much was to call somebody? <laughs> uh, bring them back. Rotary phones need to come back. <laughs> Classics. I would get these kids off their screens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Go outside. Oh, before we start sounding too boomer. Um <laughs> too late, man. It's too late. Too late. We're already in there, man. <laughs> ah. Oh, back to the brothers. They each have a Super Bowl already. Mm-hmm. And Super Bowl rings aren't as I don't want to say necessary, but they aren't as sought they weren't as sought after by the consumers of the game for players not of quarterback mm-hmm. however they sure do make you look good at any other regardless of what position you play and both of the brothers have their own ring so mm-hmm. which kelsey brother needs the second ring more wow I don't, honestly, I don't think me either, well, of course, one's going to win one regardless, but I don't think either one really needs it. Let's be honest, and it's and I think it's based on position. Jason, right? Center, O-lineman, he's got his ring. He's 
he's going into the Hall of Fame. Let's be honest. He, he's a Hall of Fame center. Mm-hmm. He's proven it. So right now, this ring is just going to, it just it's like the exclamation point kind of deal with him. I don't think he needs it. He's, you know, like I said, probably the best center in the league. You know, and I, yeah, with a center, like you said, it's like the added extra kind of deal. But for him and like, you know, watching, you know, like I said, his podcast and listening to him talk, he he takes it personally. So, you know, he wants this ring. You know, it's more of, I think this one is more of a family kind of thing for them. You know, if you see their interaction um, with Travis, I think it's it's not needed because his stats have already have elevated him into that, you know, top five of all time tight ends. I think especially with this year. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just, again, it's just, it adds it on. It's the exclamation point that says, okay, he is legit, you know, top five tight end, if not top three. Um, it, it proves that he is that offense. And I don't think a lot of times people give them, give them that enough. Because if you look at all their success, yeah, they had Tyreek and they had other pieces. They had, you know, Mahomes. But Travis makes that offense go. I think if you really stop Travis in this game, their offense kind of becomes, what do we do? Because yeah. those other pieces don't have that have that thought process of, okay, what do I got to do? Because Travis will run a route, you know, and he's always like, okay, if he sees that Mahomes is in trouble, he'll break that route. He's just They're just in tune with each other. He does the little things. And I don't know if those other guys around Patrick know how to do that yet. So I don't think either of them need the ring. I think they want it, but I don't think it adds that much more to the legacies right now. I don't. Um, if Jason decided to walk away, mm-hmm. ride off into the sunset. The Eagles win. Let's say the mm-hmm. Eagles win. Let's say Jason Kelsey decides to walk off into the sunset. Like we saw with Strahan. Like we saw with Ray Lewis. Like we saw with Tayan. Like we saw with Jerome mm-hmm. If Jason Kelsey does, if, if the Eagles win, will Jason Kelsey walk off into the sunset and use the Super Bowl win as his swan song? I don't know. I haven't heard anything from him saying, you know, this is it. I'm ready to walk away. But you don't know. We only know what they tell us. Maybe, maybe he's like, you know what? My body's kind of feeling it. You know, I can ride off high. I can walk away with my legs. Like, you know, he could sit there and say, you know, Brady walked away. It wasn't a Super Bowl, but he walked away under his own. He was able to walk off on his own accord. I want to be able to do that. Yeah. It all depends what hunger he has for the game. Because some guys need that. They need to know that, you know, come, you know, April, May or whatever, I got to start getting, getting prepped, getting my body right. Get ready for training camp you know it, it's what it's what they are you know he does have a family and such he may say you know what i want to be able to stand up take my daughter to school i want to be able to play with my daughter so he may say you know what this was good you know these guys know what they're doing i've left them in good hands i can walk away yeah yeah i kind of i, I kind of like those moments when the hall of fame player uses the super bowl as their opportunity to walk off so I kind I kind of like seeing that, even though it's I, sad, even though it's sad to see a great player not you know not not see them again the next year. <laughs> I kind I think that I think that's a moment that all players want, especially the great ones. I think they do, but I it all I think it depends on the mindset. If they're like, no, I still got plenty in the tank, then no, they want to come back. I think, I think players now have that mindset of, okay, I can walk away. The players of, let's say, starting maybe five, six years ago would still be like, nope, I'm going. Because that's all they knew. Yeah. You know, the NFL is, you know, they understand it's more of a business now, especially with, you know, CTE and all of these things. There are a lot of other things to consider, but there's also a lot of opportunity outside the game. Once it's over, you're still going to be tied to it in some way. A lot more players are becoming coaches and things of that nature. You know, but I also I just think it depends on that player's mindset. If they still feel they've got a little more and they can do it, I think they're gonna take a chance. But 
no, I think it would be cool for him for him to walk away, especially because you're playing center, man. Like you've got to be beat up more than anybody else. <laughs> you know, the knees and everything. I'd like to see him walk away. You know, maybe coach. You know, he's he's great on a mic. So you know, maybe you know an analyst is in his future. Centers make good analysts. Look at Sean O'Hara. Look at Jeff Saturday. Yeah, look what Jeff Saturday is now. <laughs> He gave us a spark. It may have been a short-lived spark, but it was a spark nonetheless. That man rolled dice and said, hey, buddy, you want to be a quarterback? Come on over. <laughs> throw, throw darts at the ball. It's you. You're starting. Ruined, he ruined the end of Matt Ryan's career. <laughs> Talk about a legend killer. It was bad enough that man had to deal with 28 to 3. <laughs> But then he had to get benched by Jeff Saturday. That's how your career goes. See, that's wrong. But I digress. It could have been worse. He could have been benched by Josh McDaniels. <laughs> and rub salt in the moon for 28 to 3. 28 to 3. <laughs> ah, all right. Enough of that. I won't. <laughs> Man had a career, Chase, and he ruined it. Had a career, and he ruined it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, all right. Speaking of players that have that could have career-defining moments, a lot of times in Super Bowls, we wind up with a Super Bowl MVP that has comes out of nowhere or has this incredible performance to make establish a new name for themselves. Yep. Who do you think is a good option as a breakout player or sleeper MVP of this game? Wow. Wow. Oof. See, what's funny is, like, on the Eagles, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Like, like legit, you could say, like, Hassan Reddick could be one because he's on a tear right now. Like, no, I don't think anyone can stop him. Like, I just don't. Like, he's on a tear. Um... Devontae Smith. That's my pick. You know, he, he's, you know, he's, you know, I hate to, I don't know if I hate to use it, but I think the, the Batman and Robin cliche is is overused in sports now. You hate to say it. <laughs> I do. I'm like, oh, Lord, really? But the Eagles, man, everyone's a Batman. Like, you know, because AJ, AJ, AJ Brown's the Batman there. I think they call freaking Jason Kelsey sexy Batman. They all have got, there's all some kind of Batman there. Um, but I think Devontae Smith could be one. Miles Sanders. You know, they've got a lot of guys. They're three-headed monster. <laughs> exactly. So I think you could literally pick anyone on, on the Eagles, and they could be that because there isn't that real. Besides A.J. Brown, I don't know if there's a superstar. Like, they're stars, but they're not, like, super. They're not Mahomes and Travis Kelsey types. Yeah. So, I would either say Devontae Smith or, or Sanders. I think those are the two that I'm going to be watching the most. Yeah. I think Sanders scores first. I could see that. I could see that. Or, or he I does think... all the or he does all the work, gets him down the two yard line and gains all scores. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like you said, it's that it's that three headed monster they've got. They just throw anybody in there and there's somebody scores. So Yeah, my my money's definitely on Devontae Smith because um I think Kansas City has to key in a lot on uh, AJ Brown. <laughs> And I think that's going to create a, some really, really favorable matchups for Devontae Smith. It is, and Dallas Goddard, too. I think mm -hmm. he could be a guy. That's true. He could be, that's, he that's could even be a, a better red sleeper. Zone. <laughs> huh? He could be that red zone guy. Yeah. So I think that people, I don't want to say sleep their offense, but I think their defense gets a lot more hype than the offense really does. And, and deservedly so, the last, you know, two, three games, that defense has been incredible. But I think this might be a game where that offense wakes up from a passing standpoint. Because they haven't had to pass, let's be honest. They didn't have to do anything against San Francisco because San Francisco had the peanut guy in there throwing. 
you know, they had nobody. And I feel bad. I feel bad for San Fran. They had nobody. They had the ball boy come in and throw. Like, that's, that's what it was. You know, like, Jalen Hurts hasn't had to really do anything the last couple games, which is good for him in a sense where he could really rest the shoulder. But now, now you have to show up. You're going to have, if you have to throw, you've got to make the throws. So, no, that's who I, that's what I'm going with. Basically, anyone on, anyone on Philly. If you had to pick, if you had to pick someone on the Chiefs. A lot more tough right now. <laughs> wow. That, I mean, you can't. I mean, we know we can't say Mahomes and Kelsey because neither of them are sleepers. No, no. Um, I guess. I, I'll, I'll give you two. I'll give you two, and it, they'll be on the offensive on the offensive ball side. Juju. Because let's be honest. Since Juju left, you know, when Juju left, you know, Pittsburgh, it was, oh, you know, all he cares about are TikToks and he day he can't do anything, you know, like, is he really good? You know, they moved him and kept, you know, Claypool, which in retrospect might not have been the smartest move, even though they moved him, you know, but Juju could perform. Juju could be that guy. And Pachenko. I was thinking Pacheco too. I, 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 that kid run. He runs with an attitude. He, he runs with. He runs like no one, no one likes him. Like his parents kicked him out the house. He's got nothing, to, nothing to lose. He's, he's like in that in the movies where like the hero has nothing to lose. He's been beat to hell, and he's got to, he's got to somehow stop the bad guy. And he's, he's like, I don't care. Do whatever you got to do, and he somehow pulls it out. He runs with this reckless abandon. And he could he could be the, the X Factor. Yeah, I like Pacheco a lot too because they're not gonna expect anything from him. So he could very easily get about six, seven catches on checkdowns. Yeah. Touchdown that way. Pound out some short yardage runs. The other one I kinda like I can see would be Chris Jones. True, true. Because they're true. gonna he's have pretty much the name on that defense. Yeah. Could be him. And they're gonna have to get they're gonna have to get Jalen off the field because I have a I have a funny feeling that Philly, especially with all their running backs, is, are gonna limit field field time for the Chiefs offense. Oh, I think that's their number one game plan. I think they're gonna they're gonna run, they're gonna do a lot of stuff, you know, they're gonna do a lot of things to sit there and say, Okay, we're gonna chew the clock. And if they get a lead, then yeah, it's gonna be a snail's crawl. Yeah. You know. But if they find some, but it could be a situation where if they find something in that defense, because let's be honest, the Chiefs defense has played way above what we thought they were. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. So if that defense all of a sudden hits a hiccup, and you know Sirianni says, "Oh no, we're we're playing the win," that could also be the downfall of the young guy because he's going to want to go for the jugular early. So it's going to be kind of tempering. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna run our offense. We're not gonna go crazy, and you know, midway through the third quarter, if we know we're smelling blood, then okay, fine. But I think what they're gonna do is, yeah, they're gonna try to control the clock. Um, the Chiefs are probably gonna, you know, try to bring the pressure, but I think that offensive line of Philly is it's good. They're good, mm-hmm. and they've had enough time to really plan on that. So. I think the Chiefs defense has to be the star of this game. I think their defense has to be. They can't make mistakes. They can't afford to. That's the one unit that can't afford to make a mistake. Yeah. Truly. Because <laughs> then Philly's going to be out and running, and they're going to have a lot bigger lead. <laughs> You're going to have like six Batman scoring, because that's all it's going to be. <laughs> oh, One of everyone's favorite uh, memories of Super Bowl week, of course, is Media Day. <laughs> Do you have a favorite moment that came out of Media Day, Media Week this week? Media Week this week. <laughs> Let's see. I liked, um, honestly, I think the one I liked the most, and I think it had the most, it was a more of a, it had kind of like a serious tone to it, was Jalen Hurts. It was kind of like this, you know, you know, they were asking him, like, you know, questions. You know, no one wanted to draft you. You know, the Eagles really, you know, 
they didn't really want you. Like, you know, did you even think you were going to be the starter? And he was just like, yep, I'm here. I'm the guy. And I feel that that bodes well for Philly. Because it wasn't like this, yeah, but gosh, golly, gee, I made it work. And everyone likes me now. It's that attitude of, well, I, I don't care. The guys in that locker room trust me and believe in me. And I'm going to do what I need to do. Because I think media day is fun and all. Because, like, you know, they have, like, the little kid who asks questions. They bring in, like, the person dressed like a, I don't know, like a hot dog or something. Asking questions. And it's this fun time. And that's great and all. But I I like the fact that Jalen was, like, it was serious. It was like, nope, no one believed in me. That's fine. These guys believe in me. And that's all I need. So I kind of liked it. It kind of it got, it got me a little more excited for the game. And to his credit, he didn't lose his cool from being asked something like that. Exactly. Like, like I, I like, probably, I'm a firecracker. I probably would have snapped at him. Since somebody asked I him. think by week six, I'm like, you're really asking me the same question? You're really <laughs> asking, really, we're doing this? You know, but no, to his credit, like I said, you know, from, you know, getting benched in Alabama, going to Oklahoma, and then coming in, the guy's a pro. The guy is, the guy, in all senses of, of the word, he's a pro. He's can handle it so i don't think this is the spotlight is too big for him in this situation because he's had to build himself back up so i think that was my favorite moment that and one of mine was a little bit of a funny moment they asked uh well actually i'll say one thing shame on this reporter i don't know who it was but shame on this reporter they tried to get they they this is they they probably got they, they 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 tried to set up Mahomes for a really nasty question, and it's mm-hmm. probably without context, it could be played over and over again and make him look like make him look like kind of a jerk or n- not respecting history. But mm-hmm. they asked him, uh, you know, oh Rihanna said that you're the greatest quarterback of all time. What do you say to that? And you know he. He played it off and he gave kind of a political answer, but he kind of be like, oh, well, thank you. You know, oh, so somebody says that, I'll believe it, blah, 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 blah. And the guy says, oh, no, she didn't really say that. And I'm like, why you, why you got to do, why you got to set this man up like that? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, they got to do something. Because like I said, media day is so overblown now. <laughs> like it's, it's like I watch it because I feel like I have to watch it. You know, because you think you're gonna get there. You might, you'll have that moment where you're like, "All right, that's cool," but everything else is just over, overly fluff. And you know, they're gonna ask these questions. So yeah, like, there's no reason for that. You know, but the reporter probably just needed to make his name, and so for like 30 seconds, he was great, and now everybody probably bashed him on his Twitter. <laughs> you know, but but see, those are the questions Mahomes is gonna get. You know, yeah. like. You think you're, you know, because everyone's like, oh, you could, you win this one, you could be the greatest of all time, and this and that, and it's like, all right, pump the brakes, pump the brakes, everybody, <laughs> like, because at that point you're like, all right, well, what about every quarterback that's won only two rings? Are they the greatest of all time? Like, let's be realistic here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, there's no need for that. Like, no need. One one moment that I got a kick out of, I forgot what I forgot what exactly the, the phrasing the reporter used, but she asked Andy Reid something like how he took his coffee or something, and he said he didn't drink coffee. She's like, oh well, what do you drink to get you going in the morning? He's like, nothing. I just get up and roll. I have a surprising amount of energy for a chubby guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, you know what? I'm just gonna give him this. I'm gonna I'm just gonna feed into this and give him what give him whatever they want, and I can move on. Yeah. You know, like, because, you know, Andy Reid's like, I got better things to do than sit here and ask you these questions. But you know what? It wouldn't surprise me. The man, <laughs> you know, the man's been doing it this long, and he's he's got some he's got some pop to him. That's right. <laughs> um, I was expecting an award show last night. Saturday night, prime time. And for some reason, all the awards started to leak on Thursday. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened? I thought the award show was going to be Saturday. <laughs> it's like now with like the Super Bowl commercials. 
<laughs> yeah. pretty much almost seen them all already. Yeah. Or it's like Black Friday. You get it like two weeks in advance. Like, why do I even bother? Yeah. Like, why host the award show when everybody knows? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, there were some, there were some, there were some funny parts. You know, George George Kittle can sing. Like for the for those who haven't watched it, I'm telling you, go on there, go on the go on the YouTube, look up George Kittle, man. I mean, man can carry some bars. What do you think uh, about the awards? I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to argue against some of them. It's also weird seeing the Jets with two award winners. <laughs> But I guess the Jets have to win something someday. <laughs> well, those things are like the Jets haven't done anything in like 15 years. We got to give them something. We said if they didn't get anything done by 2022, we'd give them something. So here it is. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's horrible. I, I hate the Jets. I feel bad for them. Like, <laughs> like, come on, man. Aaron Rodgers, get ready for it. No. Um, no, like you said, you know, for the most, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't argue with, with who they picked. Um, like you knew, you knew Mahomes was gonna win. Yeah, and I was, it was like I was upset okay. that wasn't Jalen. It had an Aaron Rodgers feel to it to me. Like, oh, it's automatic. You know, he's gonna get it. Like he had a great season. Like, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. You, you, you couldn't argue it. You know, I'm sure there were people who statistically were, pro- were you know, in the ballpark and stuff. But it just, like I said, it has that Aaron Rodgers feel. And I'm like, all right, if he doesn't win, a, if he doesn't win the Super Bowl tomorrow, it becomes the, okay, we're just, I'm going to follow the Aaron Rodgers, you know, ladder of greatness, I guess. I'll be, you know, I'm great in the regular season, but in the postseason, I'm... <laughs> You know, well, but, um, gray and gray until the Super Bowl comes up. The rest of the games is off the chart. <laughs> the rest of the playoff games is off the chart. Well, that's well, that's true. He is better in the playoffs than Aaron. That's true. Once Aaron gets in the playoffs, it's all over. It's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's thinking about which cabin he's renting to sit in the dark for three weeks to figure out his life. <laughs> to each their own. I can't. Who am I to judge? Who am there I to it judge? is. <laughs> I, I gotta um, figure out why I have such hostility towards this man. I don't know. I don't know. It must. It must be just because he wears his twelve. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he makes it look awkward. I don't know. No, no, no. It's the whole Aaron Rodgers is the greatest of all. Aaron Rodgers is best. Aaron Rodgers is that. Whatever. <laughs> I digress. I digress. So no, I think the awards were legit. Um, you know, I don't have any real complaints. Um, yeah, I, I didn't think that. I, I really didn't think that the coach of the year was going to be anyone's but Brian Dables. However, mm-hmm. however, I think it there's like a little bit of a rub to not to Kyle Shanahan not getting it only because how many coaches can deal with losing that many quarterbacks and still get to the, and still wind up getting the NFC Championship game. <laughs> no, true, no, true, true, true. But I I, I have no problem. With him getting it because look what he had, look what he walked into, and for what he turned it into, it's pretty impressive. Like yeah. <laughs> in a hand, and those guys have are, are already in their run of consistency. So, you know, short of them doing something spectacular, which I don't even know what else they could really do, you know, I, I you can't fault you can't fault them for going for going to the Giants coach. I think you know. For the pieces that he had, had no wide receivers, basically, you know, so, and that team, that team was all on heart, you know, they believed in what he went with and that was it. So I don't have a problem with it. It works. Of course, part of awards night is always announcing the hall of fame class for this year, for this summer. And a little bit, a little bit old time, a little bit new time, a little bit of players that we remember playing and now we're like shit they're in the hall of fame now <laughs> <laughs> well you know what some of them some of them took three four times the chances to get in there so i don't feel too bad it still doesn't give me that i'm old feel yet but it's like yeah i remember that super bowl Ooh. 
but no, um, no, I, th- I think it was a solid class. I, I'm, I'm glad that Rondé is finally there. Um, yeah, I think he was, he was long overdue, long overdue. And I didn't realize he was, I can't remember, was the only player or one of, one of three players, I think it was the only, that has X amount of sacks and X amount of interceptions. Yeah. That, that he was, was unbelievable. Cool. I don't yeah. think he got, I don't think he got the credit he deserved. No. I think, especially, but down, being down here, um, like, you know, going to games and stuff, like, everybody loves Rondé. Like, you, like, do not say anything bad about Rondé Barber. <laughs> because they will come for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know a lot of guys who you know I follow on Twitter who you know follow the books and all that. Like every year, it's like, is this the year for Rondé? This is the year. It needs to be. So finally, it was like this this loud exhale of finally. You know. So no, he definitely deserved it. Um, unbelievable career. Guy played great corner. And of course, Terrell Rivas. Rivas Island. <laughs> Revis Island, um, a buck as well, former buck, former Patriot, former Jet, which everyone will remember him for more than anything. Yeah. Um, in his prime, man, no one touched him. You couldn't touch him. He was just that good. He he was the type of corner, and Champ Bailey is like this too. You look at their stats, and you don't see a lot of picks. Well, they don't have a lot of picks because nobody threw at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they had like the cleanest uniforms out of anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Because you knew you weren't throwing to that side of the field. He literally negated one whole side of the field. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, all right. So any quarterback was like, all right, I got to work on this because all of this is there's I can't even touch it. Yeah. <laughs> and those few and those quarterbacks who did attempt it ended up failing. It's yeah. realistic. He was <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I do actually wonder, like, if there is anyone that caught that, that like, whoever it is, because. Obviously, as incredible as, as he was, nobody's perfect. There had to have been somebody that scored on him. If there was oh, any, yeah, I can tell you someone right now. Randy Moss, <laughs> one-handed in the end zone, just like Is that this. On Revis? That that, was yeah. on Revis? Oh I believe God. it was on Revis. Yes, <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to watch the video because I, I pop that on every so often and get yeah. the goosebumps because it was beautiful. Yeah, like I'm wondering. Y'all, y'all know who threw it? <laughs> Ding. Ding. <laughs> I'm wondering. But, um, yeah, I believe it was on Revis. I'm wondering who like has the quote like unquote the record for my hum- for most touchdowns against Revis. <laughs> Probably not many. Maybe one. Maybe two. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to look it up because I don't know. But I don't remember seeing many. Because like we said, oh. man, he, he just shuts down the field and that's it. <laughs> but the thing with him was later on in his career, he kind of became a Deion Sanders. All right, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. He became like a hired gun. Because mm-hmm. yeah. don't forget, you know, left the Jets, went to Tampa, decided to go to New England, got his ring, and then went back to the Jets because, yeah, they love me and I love them. And then petered out and moved on and went into the sunset. But yeah. at his best, no one you couldn't touch him. The rest of the class, of course, long time tackle Joe Thomas. Very sad that that man never saw a playoff game. <laughs> but you know what? To his credit, to, to to still come back year after year after year and to be a leader like that, knowing what your situation was, all the credit to him. He deserved it. Deserves it for sure. Longtime Dolphins linebacker Zach Thomas, another uh, player wow, out of Zach. the arrow. Another player out of the era of Rondé Barber. <laughs> yep, Zach Thomas, Jason Taylor. Freaking wow, man! That Miami team had a solid defense. They they were good. That, they had everything but a quarterback. <laughs> Poor guys. Quite the Poor juxtaposition guys. to the Dan Marino teams who had a quarterback and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, right. Think about it. Like if they actually like if they were able to merge those teams, those guys would have won titles. Oh yeah. <laughs> they would have won titles because that defense was good. But they yeah they just couldn't score. They couldn't put points up for anything. Another linebacker, which. I had to do a double take on to make sure because for some reason I'm thinking like he's he was he, he's retired. <laughs> it's Demarcus Ware. <laughs> Sometimes I just thought Demarcus Ware was gonna play forever. <laughs> right? Like you'd always think like, oh yeah, there's Demarcus Ware. Okay. Mm-hmm. At the end of the season, okay, he had a good he had a good season, had good stats. Nope. Nope. And like, like you said, he was just he was just consistent. 
Uh, two, two dearly departed, Coach Don Coriel and cornerback Ken Riley. Uh, old-timey player, defensive lineman Joe Klecko. And, of course, the only Super Bowl MVP of the losing team, linebacker Chuck Howley. Hey, man, you hang your hat on that, man. Right. You're the only there one. you go. And they're never hey. going to do that again. <laughs> no, you'll never, see, you'll never see that again. It literally would have to be like a 6-3 game or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, it literally would have to be something of that, like, epic proportion. You'll never see it. Snubs. Uh, I mean, I see DeMarcus Ware, uh, DeMarcus Ware, big time pass rusher, and I see Jared Allen and Dwight Freeney left off. So, to me, those are those are the two biggest snubs, and, of course, Torrey Holt, who's been waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> with Holt, I don't know what it is. I don't know if people just don't see him as – maybe they just see him as the number two always, in, you know, in St. Louis during that time. I don't know. But his numbers and stuff are up there. He's, he was a great receiver, so I don't know what the issue is with him. Or just he just – it's one of those things where, you know, you come up every year and you just – it's the wrong year. I don't know. Um, but with a Jared Allen and some those guys will definitely get in. I think it's just going to be, you know, just wasn't their year this year. But I think within the next couple of years, those guys are going to get in. Fingers crossed. <laughs> She's like, I need something. Give me something. I, actually, in theory, I don't because all those contemporary players are just going to add up to the, the aging process really quick. <laughs> I'm a <much> master. <laughs> She's like, just get him in already. Good Lord. Yeah. Well, that's true. There is that too. Just, just end, end my misery. All right. Let's get a misery. Let's move on. At least if you put them all in the Hall of Fame, then I'll be like, okay, I'm old. And then I move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vintage. I'm good to go. <laughs> all right, sir. The moment everyone's been waiting for. Who are we picking? Wow. Well, we go back weeks ago. Um, none of my picks are in. Um, my favorite, the Niners just fell apart. Never seen anything like that in my life, but quite literally, actually, quite literally fell yes, apart. Yes, literally fell apart. Um, so in looking at this, I honestly believe it's Philly's year. I am. Oh, I'm always of the proponent of the. Some is better than the parts. I, I I am all about that. It's great to have the superstars and all of that. And there are times when your superstars carry you and, and all of this. But I think in the in the biggest of stages, this is where it counts, where the team concept really plays in. And I just think Philly, they just feel like they play for each other. Their coach, he's not about the spotlight. He's just, he's about those guys. And I just feel Jalen Hurts is out to prove a point. He, he needs he wants to prove that he belongs that he should have been MVP that hey you know what if you're going to sleep on me I'm here for the long haul and I'm going to take this team and we're going to be consistent so I'm taking Philly it's going to you know why everyone's like oh yeah Philly by three no nope, I'm taking Philly by like ten I think Philly is Philly's going to do some stuff I don't think Philly's scared of Kansas City I don't think they are I think they're like, all right, Mahomes, give us your best shot, and we're going to come back. So I'll give you 31-21. I'll take that, and <clears throat> I think Philly will win as well. I just think they're better. I just think they're better across the board. They're more complete across the board. Um, and they and like you said, they got chip on their shoulder. And every and everyone's all about Kansas City in this game. Everyone's all about Mahomes in this game. Everyone's all about Andy Reid in this game. Between the Kelsey brothers, obviously the tight end is going to get more media love than a center. So everyone's all yeah. about Kelsey. So like all the attention is going to Kansas City, and we always seem to have a trend with whoever does whoever everyone's sleeping on, whoever the talking heads are sleeping on. That's mm-hmm. typically the team that does well. I mean, the Broncos went into that Super Bowl as an all-time team, putting up all those points and paying them 55 touchdowns. What happened? They got a pick right off the bat. Look at ran it back for the touchdown, and Seattle wound up destroying them. Um, yeah, 
that was that was a rough one yeah and, and i mean everyone i mean i i don't know if they, anyone can say they really slept on the patriots because they would already won two in the previous four years or whatever it was um but everyone was all high on Sean McVay. Everyone was all high on the new this new Rams look and all that stuff. And what happened? They came out completely flat. The Patriots didn't exactly come out that much better. No, exactly. <laughs> better they, they did enough to win. That was the thing. They did enough to yeah. win. <laughs> yeah, that game was ugly. Yeah, that, that game was uglier than that old Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Seattle Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 Oof. As they're so safe, you know, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, oh. you're right. That's that's exactly what it is. Philly has the chip. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm going Philly on that. And um, second two and five years. That's pretty darn good. Across basically with two other than Jason Kelsey, basically two two entirely different teams. Yeah. Um, exactly. I don't quite remember if Dallas Goddard was on the other one. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else besides Kelsey was on both teams. He might have been. Mm. I think I'll have to check. He might have been. It might have been his first, second year. But, like you said, five years. Might have been. We'll have to check that. Right. Yeah. So, we, I, I think they're going to get their second in five years. Completely different team. Different quarterback. Different coach. Um, And I'll go with them. Um, actually, I'll go with them by two scores. I think it's going to be one of those games where... They always hold. They like they hold. If they get, they're gonna get out to a lead, and they're gonna hold it throughout, and it'll fluctuate. Like it'll go up by two, and it'll come back down to one. Maybe it gets tied. Go right back up to one. Go up to two. Come back down to one, and then Philly will toss something in, some some garbage touchdown at the end to secure a two score lead. So, I'll, I'll oh, so you're it. saying you're saying we could have an Uncle Rico touchdown? I don't think it'll no, no, I think it'll be Uncle Rico. Because <laughs> I think the game will maintain closeness. <laughs> but I'm hoping I, I, for an Uncle Rico signing. <laughs> Let Uncle Rico get his run. <laughs> Uncle Rico deserves a run. <laughs> well, fun. <huh? laughs> I will say it here now on the internet. Uncle Rico throws a touchdown. I'm getting an Uncle Rico jersey. <laughs> I'm Menchumania, baby. I'm gonna I'll get it. I'll there it, watch it's gonna be like some weird trick play in the first quarter i'm gonna be like really <laughs> couldn't even build up to it <laughs> well he gets jersey love between the, the man near and dear to both our hearts you know who i'm talking about <laughs> which man are you talking about the pride of uh james madison university Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Much love. I wonder what he's doing right now. Hopefully watching us. Send me an autograph. Send me something. <laughs> Unbelievable. Two scores. And, I can roll with you. Two scores. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. There you go. We're both picking Philly. Enjoy the Super Bowl. And we'll catch you live after the game. Peace. Peace.